want that or if you want this or if you want to sit there. Um, well, why don't we do our openings from right up here if that's okay with you? That's fine. Um, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tom Umber. And thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you for organizing this. Uh, David, I listened very closely as you were discussing the importance of one vote. And those of us who are in elective office or aspire to be in elective office, that, that one vote separating execution from non-execution made me very nervous. <laughs> so was that Charles the member didn't know that. So he's right. One vote is very, very important. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, my uh, esteemed colleague and competitor here, Carlos Bustamante, uh, thank you for being here. I am I'm actually surprised that we didn't have more folks here. Uh, but I think Carlos has an unfair advantage. He brought, like, the world's cutest little girl with him. So, I don't know if that, you didn't tell me those were the rules there. I think that's cheating bringing such a cute little girl along. A couple of other things. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Tom Humbert. And, and I want to tell you why I'm running a little bit about my background, some things that, that I focused on uh, during my time in elective office. I'm running to get our fair share here in this part of the county. Whether it's with respect to senior transportation needs, whether it's the access program, or making sure that, that seniors have the ability to be transported, they have the ability to remain productive as you are. Whether it's the bringing resources to park space. Santa Ana is the most densely crowded city in all of California, save one, and has the least amount of park space of any city per capita in California. That has huge implications for both kids and adults and for healthcare and for all kinds of other things, including public safety, to get our fair share of transportation dollars here in this part of the county, whether it's the widening of the 22 or the, or the 5 or creating super streets, to get our fair share of money for public safety, especially here in Garden Grove. Uh, Garden Grove, in terms of public safety dollars, has been uh, underfunded for many years, many years. Uh, by way of background, I actually grew up in the Midwest, and like maybe some of you, how many of you served in the service? Okay. Um, like many of you, the, the service was my ticket out of the Midwest. The United States Army was my ticket out of the Midwest to come here to UCLA. And I went to UCLA, and I was commissioned by a fellow named Omar Bradley. Some of you may know that name. Uh, he commissioned me in 1977. Uh, I think some of us in the room remember 1977. And after that, uh, I went to law school, I was in the Army for a short period, went to law school, then came out and uh, served in Korea in the militarized zone, and uh, where I, I met my spouse, uh, then Captain Bailey. Uh, we then moved to serve with U.S. forces in Europe, and we then came back here, returned here to Orange County. Uh, I was first in law practice, then I was a federal prosecutor. In fact, I was one of the first three federal prosecutors to open the courthouse in Santa Ana. It wasn't that beautiful thing that you see now. It was. Uh, what we used to call the trailers, and was one of the first prosecutors, if not the first prosecutor, to actually prosecute federal cases right here in Orange County. And as a prosecutor, I focused on a number of areas, civil rights cases, focused on cases where boiler rooms were targeting seniors, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, where they were targeting seniors in order to steal their money using the phone rather than a gun. In 1988, there was a situation that happened here in Orange County. Some of you may remember, in 1988, I was a federal prosecutor, and in Santa Ana, there are people dressed as police officers placed in polling places throughout, throughout the area. Uh, they were dressed as police officers for the purpose of asking folks if they were citizens and if they could vote and if they could prove that they were citizens. And um, I don't know about you, I don't carry my passport when I go to vote, but I thought that, that was a fairly outrageous situation. I had a big mouth and I told people somebody should do something about it. I'm a Democrat. Uh, I know you've not seen too many of those around here, but I'm a Democrat. And, uh, they said, you ought to run maybe against this fellow. Uh, at that time, there were no Democrats in any level of government here, not in the Board of Supervisors, not in the legislative delegation, not in the congressional delegation. And I didn't know I had no chance of winning. Uh, but I, I ran against that person, and, and it became a huge campaign. Huge, huge, huge campaign. Uh, Ronald Reagan and Dan Quayle came from my opponent. Uh, my grandmother from Cincinnati came for me. And uh, she's pretty tough. Uh, we won. And I went to Sacramento, and in Sacramento, I, I focused on several areas. Uh, I focused on public safety, I focused on transportation, I focused on education. And it, it, with respect to areas where I focused both when I was in Sacramento in the early 1990s and even today, uh, most recently, as some of you know, I, I left the legislature last month, uh, focused on issues of concern to, to those 
um, to seniors. Um, let me just give you some ideas of, of some of the legislation I introduced. You may remember in Leisure World there was a scandal concerning a lawyer, actually there was more than one lawyer, who was writing wills and trusts and making himself the beneficiary. How many of you remember that? You remember that? That, that was a scandal. And, and as a member of the profession, I thought that was a scandal as well, uh, where a lawyer would entice someone to come in, write their trust, and then make himself beneficiary of that trust. It's now illegal in California to do that. You can't do that. You can't write a will and make yourself a beneficiary unless you send it to another lawyer to review so there's not self-dealing. But he was spending lots of his time fleecing seniors. I also wrote a bill that said for skilled nursing care facilities and other kinds of senior facilities that you can uh, require a criminal records background check for employees. Uh, as you know, there are some really sad situations that result in senior living situations. Uh, wrote the bill also to enhance penalties for those who target seniors. I mentioned a moment ago as a federal prosecutor, um, and I prosecuted several individuals who had targeted seniors, and I, I, I remembered from that experience, they actually had a plan. They said, we're going to target seniors. We're going to target seniors because we think we can get them on the phone, and they've got disposable income, and they're most vulnerable, and they're really, if you spend enough time, that, that you can ultimately take their, all their disposable income. So now in California, if you target seniors, you get to go to jail for a longer period of time, as you should. So those are just a few examples of, of places where I focus some legislative energy. Board of Supervisors is a different environment. Board of Supervisors is a different environment. Um, I recognize that, that I may have a different voice than some on the board. It would be my job to be the advocate for seniors. It would be my job to be the advocate for this part of the county, Westminster City and Garden Grove. And it will be my job to fight for the needs of the constituents that elect me. Uh, I want to once again thank you all for giving us the opportunity. Um, and with that, I suppose that Mr. Bustamante is next up. <laughs>